I'm here today with Kevin Cassidy. He's the CEO and President for U.S. Rare Earths, Inc. How are you today, Kevin? I'm great. How are you doing, Tracy? Kevin, I'm really looking forward to speaking to you because you have recently put out some very aggressive drilling results. Can you talk to our audience about this? Sure. We are delighted at a couple of levels. We um, spent a significant budget this year in quantifying and contrasting historic data versus what we could do with newer technology. And in both cases, we are very happy to report significant findings and to some degree confirm all the work that's been din done historically by the USGS and, and Idaho GS and other, other big uh, companies that have been in here. Um, why are we so happy? Well, we always knew we had large percentages or high percentages of, of heavy rare earths. What's come to our attention now is not only have we confirmed many, uh, many chances or many instances to historic data, we've also been able to add to that by way of finding new discoveries. So we are delighted. We've extended our drill program into the fall and people are aware of the area or aware of the area. You know that in many, you know, it, it, to a large degree, weather is a, an impediment. Um, the government's been shut down, but we're still up there drilling right now. I noticed in your most recent drilling results, as you were just talking about, that you expanded your mining claims, and I think it's 25,000 acres, Idaho, Mo Montana, Colorado. Can you tell me what the catalyst was for expanding these claims? In large measure, we've gotten fantastic results back on the drill results that we've, uh, during our exploration program this uh, spring and summer. Um, we are not only drilling now, we intend to drill till the very last moment this season. Um, we added two Central Park sized pieces of property uh, specifically around readings that, that you'll come to know represent very high percentages of what we're calling critical rare earths and heavy rare earths. So um, <laughs> if someone's ex in this market expanding their properties, it's probably a good reason. Okay, well let's just jump on side here. Not only have you been expanding your properties, you actually successfully completed a private placement for four million in the last several weeks in a very challenging marketplace. So these critical rare earths you must have uh, must be, are they the catalyst for how you were able to raise or um, you know, can you tell us what other advantages that U.S. Rare Earths has that make you so much more of a compelling story when we have people lined up around the block trying to raise money right now? It's been a, a fairly straightforward process because of the historic data and our ability to confirm that data. Uh, second, the commitment on the part of the board of directors and the team we've assembled both at the sea level and on the board and the advisory board uh, make people feel comfortable and confident that we know what we're doing. We've done this in the past. This isn't our first rodeo and you bet on jockeys, not horses. Okay, well speaking of the jockeys that are on your board, I noticed that you have been a behind the scenes, really in big investor on the issues of sustainability for the United States. And I think that might be one of the reasons you've drawn in some of the power players on your board. Is that correct? Or you want to tell us a little bit more about that? That's exactly correct. We see this resource as a national treasure. We happen to have that treasure located in the continental United States. Um, the host rock makes it very uh, workable as it relates to separation. So we see the, the lens we look through and the optics that people should observe investments through are those properties that have the commercially viable rare earth in high content. Because in the end, it's a dollars and cents game. But we have issues that are of national interest, national defense, procurement, sustainability, self-sufficiency, and um, you probably read there was an article floating around a couple of weeks ago about how the Russians have committed a billion dollars. They've announced that to create self-reliance for Russia and reduce the dependency on China, they're committing a billion dollars. Well, we are determined as a board, as a C-level group, group of uh, in, in executives, all of whom don't have to do this for a living, to create an American complete supply chain solution, which will include a separation mill for the critical and heavy rare earth elements in the continent of the United States. Well, brilliant. Sounds like a win-win to me, Kevin. Thank you so much for joining us today, and please let us know uh, when you're ready with your next news. I will. Stay tuned. <laughs>